Hey friends, happy Monday. Um, happy beginning of the week. Welcome to my live. And if you happen to be watching later, welcome to the replay. My name is Robin and I'm with Robin's A Blue Creations. And I'm also an independent designer with Chat Couture. So once you hop on um, either the live tonight or the replay at a later date, say hi in the comments. Tell me where you're watching from. Um, put hashtag replay. Um, you can put hashtag live or hashtag replay, depending on which version you are watching. Um, but I'm so glad that you were able to join me on in either account or in either version. Let's just say that. <laughs> so I'm live in three locations this evening. So if you hear me refer to a comment that you don't see in your comment feed, that person may be viewing and commenting from a different platform. Also, if you are watching from my private Facebook group, there is a permission link in the description of the video. Clicking that link just allows StreamYard to um, uh, pin your profile name and pick to your comment. In my comment feed, you can choose whether or not you want to click that link. But if you choose not to, then just know that you're going to show up as Facebook user in my comments and I won't know who to say hi to. So I see that Jason is watching from the other side of the door. <coughs> Again, as you hop on, say hi. And I'm going to open this up in my group just so I can see who's here. I'm not going to call you out if you don't want me to. Um, but um, and as always, if you like what you see during the evening or during the replay, make sure you hit that thumbs up button or the heart button. Spread the chalk love around Facebook and YouTube. Tag your crafty friends and invite them to watch along with you. And I apologize, my camera is flickering again. I don't know why it's doing that. But let's just go ahead and flip the camera so you don't have to watch that anymore. I see that Miss Bonita hopped on. Welcome. Okay, so we are, it is, but a bum bum. I was going to try to do a drum roll. <laughs> that didn't work out real well. It is hashtag monthly transfer Monday. So we are again using the club couture transfer um, this evening. So this is part of an exclusive DIY monthly subscription kit. Um, the only people that are able to get this particular transfer are club couture members and designers. So if you at any point you would like more information about Club Couture, go ahead and type club in the comments. But this is the transfer. Um, the paste colors that it comes with this month are black velvet, bark, and sage, I believe. I think that's correct. But um, tonight I'm just going to use a portion of it. So the first week I used it, we used the entire transfer. The second week we used it, I just used the gingham print that's down here. Tonight we're just going to use the rooster and the pig. And I'm going to make a cute little, hopefully a little faux macrame wall hanging with this. I believe it's, yep, yeah, it's five by seven. I picked these surfaces up at Hobby Lobby. They come in a package of six and I've actually glued two of them together to make about a quarter, well, no, these are, oops, I don't know if it's an eighth of an inch, it's about an eighth of an inch, so they're about a sixteenth of an inch normally, which they're super thin, so I like to glue two of them together, so I have pre-stained this with watered down acrylic paint, so it's a little darker, um, and then I went over it with some, a little bit of dry brushing with plaster Waverly chalk paint. Hello, Margie. Hello, Cheryl. Welcome. So I just dry brushed it on. So I just took a really cheap um, chip brush and just kind of laid some paint just to make it look really distressed. And then I think I'm going to try just to give it a little bit more texture. I'm going to come in with some um, Deco Art Americana acrylic paint. I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm not going to get a whole lot. I just want to give it, I'm going to, I've seen it done. I haven't ever tried it. Uh, 
So I'm just going to get a lot of it off and I'm going to kind of do the same thing just to give it a little bit of a different color, a little bit just here and there, a little bit more texture. Just have some of that color peeking out. You can hear my chair squeaking. I'm going to rub it, grind it down in there. Start with a little bit. You can always add on more color if you need to. It just takes a little longer to cover it up if you've added too much. Just a little tiny bit. And I can probably go ahead and add in a little more. darker. So there, just, just some more vintage grunge vibe. Anita says, have you ever used the chipping method using candle wax? Um, I've tried it with the Vaseline and I kind of got it to work, but not really. But yeah, I've seen Sarah with Booksy and Buttons do it. Um, I just kind of prefer this method. It doesn't look quite as vintage as it probably could. Let me get that a little darker. I'll have to kind of experiment more with that, but I did try the Vaseline once and it just didn't work real whip whippy. Anita says she loves, oh, Thank you. You said you love my dry brush technique. Can't wait to try it on a Mother's Day project that you need to do. That's right. Mother's Day is coming up in a few weeks. Let's see. Thanks for the reminder. It would be really pretty to add in a little bit of red. I'm just going to get a little tiny bit right. there. Okay. So there is that. And then I think let's, before we get all the accoutrements on it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sand the edge. just so I don't have to do it with the yarn later. Let's turn that over. You can even come back in and sand on this top port on even the top bring some more of that dark color out if you would like. Whatever floats your boat. Okay, so let's get, let's move all this paint out of the way. So let's bring in our transfer. Again, this is the monthly club transfer. Um, and don't do what I did. I put it on the backer sheet to wet. You need to let these lighter transfers dry almost completely before you um, 
put it back on the backer sheet. Otherwise, your backer sheet will warp. I don't think it affects. Well, it kind of does. My transfer is a little wrinkled. Also, don't use... If you're going to tape off any portions of these lighter transfers, use the, <coughs> the placement tape. I used thin painter's tape, and it literally peeled off some of my teal. So that underneath there is... I've actually exposed some more of the mesh. So don't do that. Learn from my mistakes. Um, I think... I don't think I'm going to wax just because... There isn't a lot of chalking surface involved. It's more of some of the finer details. We'll see what happens. But I'm just going to knock back a little bit of that adhesive. And again, we're just going to use what we can of the pig and the rooster. I'm going to have to cut some of the pig's back end off it's gonna bug me that the rooster isn't centered but we'll live with it so i think we'll just go there uh bonita says she didn't have much luck with the vaseline but you like the candle wax we'll have to try it with some candle wax Get a, I'm sure I have some spare candles around here. So I'm going to tape this farm fresh portion off because I don't want to accidentally paste, paste it. And I'm using the placement tape. Hopefully it won't peel off my, the teal portion like my painter's tape did. Now I have to decide... I thought I was going to use gray or storm, but I think it may be too light. So I think we're just going to punt and do black. Ooh. So this is black velvet. And since Benita brought up Mother's Day, I just want to remind you that there is a nifty feature on our chalk couture, our chalk sites now where you can put in a wish list. Like you can put items in your on your wish list, kind of like building your own cart. And then you can send a link to, of that wish list to your kids, your significant other, um, bonus children, and then they can purchase things directly from your wish list. Um, so if any of your, if you need help building your wish list, I would be more than happy to help you. I think that's a cool little feature. So I'm just loading some black velvet onto my squeegee. And I'm just going to fill in where those silk screen areas are. Oh, I didn't really want the grass, but that's okay. I got the grass. So now I'm just going to take off the excess and kind of even out my squeegee lines because if you let those dry, they'll show up in your design, which isn't a terrible deal, but... So let's put the lid on that. Get that out of the way. So then let's peel it up and see. <laughs> it's super cute. Okay, so let's dry this off. To dry it. I'm glad I used black and not gray because storm wouldn't have shown up very well.
There is our pig and our rooster. Super cute. I like that little touch of turquoise. That was weird. Okay, so I'm going to put that to the side. And I want to show you one of the biggest selling points of using Chat Couture products. I'm going to put the yarn away so it doesn't get wet. I want to show you how super duper easy peasy it is to clean your transfers. So we're minus all my talking we're less than 15 minutes into our project and we've gotten a majority of it finished so now let's sh i'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to clean up so you just need a water source so right now i have just a little util a little tub of water i kind of like to rub my transfer chalk side down just on the bottom to kind of help loosen up some of that paste and then I'm going to flip it over. It's going to get kind of hard to see because my dirt water is going to get dirty. But I just have a board eraser here. And they aren't just for your boards. They're, they work great for your transfers. While it's underwater, I'm going to peel off all of that transfer or the placement tape. And then I'm just going to use my, going to use my, I need to quit saying going to use. I'm just going to use my board eraser and wipe off the paste on the front side. And now I'm flipping it back over and I'm going to rub, going to rub my board eraser over the back side. And that helps to release any chalk paste that still may be in the transfer. And it, you will see some staining, especially with black. Um, some of the higher pigmented pastes like red and green will stain a little bit, but that's not a big deal. And don't work, don't panic that your transfer loses its sticky, like it's not sticky at all when it's wet. But as it dries, it will um, the stickiness will come back. I don't know why it happens with this particular manufacturer, but it does. But don't panic. So I'm just going to clean off the backside to get off some of that lint that we put on there with the fuzz cloth. I'm just using a disinfecting wipe. And then I'm just going to leave this sticky side up for about 15, 20 minutes until it's completely dry. And then I'm going to put it back on its backer sheet. So I can put that to the side over here. So now let me make sure that my glass mat is clean and dry. So now let's bring in our little surface and I'm going to see if, how much yarn I can get in between these little holes. So now here comes the faux macrame portion and I also wanted to show you one more thing but I need to grab them I've had this stuff buried for a while so I'm going to darken up my edges a little bit so I'm going to use and you can use distress ink I happen to have some archival inks here I think I'm going to use this darker one this one's ground espresso but there's, you can get, I've got um, black soot, vintage photo, hickory smoke, um, and then ground espresso. So I'm just going to get a little bit onto the blending foam. You can see on this right side that it kind of darkens that back up. You could also just take your ink pad directly onto that edge and darken it up that way as well if you don't want to mess with the it's 
a little bit more. It just darkens it a little bit. And then you can go back in and I'm not going to do the bottom because you won't see that anyway. Then I just take this little guy off and he fits right down in there. So then I have blending foams for each of my colors. So then I just keep that on the little tray right up there. And there you go. I'm going to dry that. I do like the hint of turquoise too. I think I'm going to go back um, on the um, the home garden flag that I made last week and add some turquoise to that one as well, just to give it a, it, it kind of gives it a little bit more dimension, a little bit of texture. Okay. Now let's get our find our end. That's always the hard part. There. So I think I'm just putting it off here to kind of then hopefully. So let's add another two inches onto that. So I did 10 inches, but I'm going to add a couple of inches on to account for the knot that I want to do. So, so that's double or that's, I'm going to eventually double these over, but I want to see how many I can fit through one hole. Let's try for try for five that might be pushing it since this is thinner yarn and it's kind of you can't see it on the camera but there's a it's cream and there's a bit of gray and a little bit of I don't know it's kind of a weird variegation of yarn so let's see I forgot that's going to end up being doubled over. Five may be too many. <laughs> Five may be a bit over ambitious. So let's take one out after I cut these. So let's just try four because I forgot they'll end up being doubled over. So you'll actually end up with eight. So I'm just doubling it over and I have all of the loops in this hand and I'm going to try to get them through. Let's see if we can get some assistance here. What I need is a jumbo threader. Ah, I just stuck my transfer to my elbow. <laughs> Ouch. Sticky has definitely come back. Um, let's do a little bit of improvising here. So I just found a random paper clip. You'd be amazed at what is on my desk. So I have a paper clip here. I'm going to bend it in half. Kind of make ouch, a needle-ish. See if that'll go through the holes. Smash it a little bit. Twisty ties work great. I sometimes have a random twisty tie. I think that'll go through the holes. So I'm going to maybe. <laughs> now I need to undo it and break every nail.
Okay, Robin. What else do you have in here? A twisty tie would be fantastic. Or a pipe cleaner. Um, or let's just cut the end of this zip tie off. And I think this will work better. Maybe if I can get it off. Okay. Zip tie. Fold your yarn in half. Squeeze your zip tie together. And then I probably put it through the wrong way. Let's see. Take your needle, your threader out for your zip tie. Grab all of your loops. And then I'm going to pull my tails and I, nope, I think I have it right. So four is a pretty good number. Okay. So now I just need to make three because I have another one laying here. So those were 12. Sorry, this is, um, and then they were doubled. So one, and there's a nice knot right there. Two. three. I may not do the whole thing just so you don't have to sit here and watch me do all that. Okay, so here's our four strands. They're about, well, they're 24-ish um, long because then you'll double them over. You'll get, so here's my loop. Use my little twisty tie threader here that works fantastic. So I have my, have it on my little threader. Put it through to the back, pull your loops, your um, loops through, and then you're going to put your tails through the loop and you're going to pull. And then that's what you're left with. It's a little lark's head knot. And you could do different colors. Okay, so there's one. Three and four. So again, I'm not even going to undo the loops this time. So here's our big loop. Here's our needle. Put it through towards the back. And you could even add in different colors. You could add in black. You could add in some turquoise. I just liked this neutral color. You could add in lace would be really pretty. It's just going to bulk up your holes a little bit, but. And then I'll come back in and trim the bottoms. But I love to do these little macrame faux things. So there's one. Two, three, four. So, did everyone have did everyone have fun this past weekend? Did you do anything special? Kind of dreary weather on Saturday. Trying to get one of these is kind of rogue. There we go. It's looking cute. Don't know if you can see any of that variegation. There's a little bit of peach creamy color in there. Oops. So then. There's two, three, 
for. This is also a great way to use up quite a bit of yarn if you have a lot in your stash like I do. Uh, Bonita says she went to Burlington and watched your granddaughter play volleyball. Love, love me some volleyball. Did they win? Okay. I might as well finish. If you want to hang out with me while I finish, that's fantastic. If you have other things you need to do, I understand. But might as well get something done. And also, you need to let me know, do you think I should add some beads to the hanger? Like I've done on some other um, hanging signs. Or do you think I should just do straight... Um, straight yarn. And if you don't have a Hobby Lobby near you and or you're already putting in a Chalk Couture order, we do carry the 5x7 refills for the double A or the A frame sign. So you could pick a few of those up and do the same thing. You will have to poke your own holes, which I had to poke my, poke these as well. Um, but they come in either brown and white. So you wouldn't even have to paint it. You could just kind of sand it down, add a little bit of turquoise, and there you go. I know I should probably <laughs> promote Chalk Couture surfaces a little more, but I'm also of the proponent that if you can only invest in a few of the products, I'm a proponent of spending your money on the transfers, one, paste second, and then surfaces third, because you can always use other surfaces there's also ways around just using chalk paste which i could show you um, in my vip group or my uh, crafty group at some point if you really wanted me to um, but i know not all of us can afford to invest in all three so that's why i kind of like to show non chalk couture transfers or surfaces that way you can use whatever you have at home. Oh, well, th those are sweet words, Margie. Thank you. Very kind words. I would have liked the yarn to be a bit more beefier and not have had these gaps, but I can't. That's all I could cram through those holes. <laughs> okay, a couple more. Thank you for patiently waiting while I finish this up. So again, I'm measuring at 12, but I'm really using the kind of the 24 mark. And so I'm just making four strands. Ideally, on something like this, it'd be nice just to have a straight opening to where this is a rail, but until I figure out how to use my new toy, drilled holes will have to do. I should say my new tool. Okay. So have you guys thought about whether I should add beads to the hanger portion of this? because that's coming up next. So there's one, three, and four. My little 
handy dandy twisty tie threader and it works fantabulous to get my yarn through there. So the next time you're struggling with getting beads onto your twine, I highly suggest a twisty or a zip tie. It works fantastic. Okay, so there are our strings and I'll eventually, well, I guess I could do it now. I just need to cut through all those. mess going. So just cutting these the loops in half. Jason says beads are always good. So should I but then it means I have to paint them. Got them all. It's not as full as I would like, but it works. So, um, I think I will. I'll just add a hanger now. I don't think I have anything that would work. I just have some plain beads. Those don't even have. Got this bead, it's kind of light though. Um, let's so we don't really want to paint on that because I might want to use it, although I have another one, so let's. Okay, so I'm just thinking out loud. So let's paint this one roughly. I can always take this apart and repaint the other two, but we'll at least paint this one. Yeah, I'll have to figure out what color I actually painted. Or I watered down some paint to, to faux stain the original board. So this color back here. So I have to figure out what color that is. So I will just come back and paint those other two beads. But we'll put them on tonight just so you can kind of see. This is definitely use what you have tonight. Uh, night. Okay, so let's dry this one. that off since I painted my other. Okay, let's bring our yarn back in. I'm just trying to figure out, trying to see how many on each side I should do. So if I do that that ends up being four 
So I'll add another two for the other side. So these are roughly 14, 15, almost 20 inches long. I'll use two on one side and two on the other. And they'll be doubled over. That's kind of the theme for the evening. Actually, I just need to put these two through. So I probably didn't need a threader, but. Okay, so there's that side. And then there's this side. away. So let's I don't know if I'm going to get those through. Let's try our threader. I think this may be too much, but we'll give it a whirl. Probably not with these two beads because they were over there. They were over there for a reason. The holes aren't cut all the way through. Let's find a couple more that have good open holes. I'm kind of down to the bottom of my barrel. I need some more beads. I'm going to have to ask for some for Mother's Day. That's a good one. Let's get some. With... There we go. Okay, let's see. Yep, it works. Perfect. Oops. So there's one bead. Except for I messed up my ends. And end up pulling. Oh no. I, so I'm just readjusting my ends so they, they kind of meet up here at the top. So then let's add on our green one. The twist, the zip tie works great as a bead th threader. Another handy tip of the night. If you struggle with getting beads on. I usually do three. It's just my personal preference. And then I usually just kind of try to meet everything up at the top and then just tie everything off. Beads kind of make it seem off center, but or off kilter, but. And then those will eventually just kind of fray on their own. So there you go. And I will come back in. Those will be darker. There is our finished project. Boom. 45 minutes. Pretty good for me. <laughs> okay. Let's come back here. Um... Trying to think if I should go through any of the just want to remind you and we we still have to do the giveaway too. Um, just want to remind you about the two chalk boxes that are available. Hopefully they're still available. I have not checked. Um, but this is um the vintage farmhouse chalk box, and this is like the busy bee chalk box. 
great values. Um, in fact, this one, they are all retired transfers. Um, that way you don't have to see me moving around. And then just also wanted to remind you that we have a new perks pack available. If you are interested in being a designer, there's also the color of the month. This is Duchess. I should be getting mine tomorrow. Woo -woo um, so you are able to unlock the purchase of Duchess with a $75 order and you can order up to three. Um, the first month, the color of the month sold out in eight days. Last week, it's last month, it sold out in a few weeks. This one, it's still available, but um, it may go fast. Uh, it may not make it to the end of the month, I guess is what I should say. So let me show you. Let's, let me hold up our finished piece. Super cute. I kind of like it. He's really cute. The little, little pig and the rooster. And then our cute little beads. Let's come back to the comments. Uh, Bunny just says she thinks the beads make it look balanced since the chicken is not in the middle. There you go. That'll make my symmetrical heart feel <laughs> a little better. It was really bugging me when I first put the transfer on that the rooster was not centered. But you're right. The beads do offset that. So my, my symmetrical heart and mind won't go crazy. Okie doke. Let's do, before we do the giveaway, just want to remind you, I will be live again on Wednesday at 7.15 p.m. Central. And as always, the mornings that, the mornings of the evenings that I go live, I do a check-in post on Facebook. Um, so make sure, and then I do a happy mail gift away that night in the live. No purchase necessary, need not be present to win. But the only way that you are eligible for that night's giveaway is by commenting on that check-in post. So Jason says, beautiful project. Thank you. So let's, let me share my screen because I had people check in with me this morning. Um, let me share. There we go. Let's remove this one. We don't need that. Okay. So let's go down here and we will push start. Make sure I have all the cop. Oops. Uh oh, poop sticks. Um, there we go. Okay. Now I have to hit start. And Miss Bonita is the winner. Congratulations, Bonita. Woot woot. I'll have to add you to my, to my ever growing list. And I still I still owe you one more, so now I owe you two, I think. I'll have to go back to my list. Congratulations though. Woot woot. Pays to check in on those check-in posts. Um I do know I owe you, so now I owe you two. So I will go into my stash and get you some fun goodies and get those delivered this week. <laughs> woo, woo. okie doke with that i'm going to wrap up for the evening um thank you so much for watching thanks for all your support check back on wednesday morning for that check-in post and i will see you on wednesday evening have a great week